up OMG Nation Today I want to tell you a quick road story from my days as a pro wrestler I'm going to tell you a road story about Ken Shamrock when I was in TNA Impact Wrestling The first time I ever met Ken Shamrock I was like, that's a massive dude. He's just wide and a very thick person. So, I kind of, I wouldn't say we became buddies. He was just a really cool dude to me and to my tag partner. Um, but he would talk to us and chat it up with us a little bit. And, um always just super cool to me so one day before the show and this is when I first started and I was on the ring crew we're putting together the ring we get everything set up he comes out and starts just kind of shooting the bull with us and I don't know maybe I'm half crazy or something but I decided that uh, I just looked at him and said Ken is there a way that I could grab you and hold you and you would not be able to get out of it like if I came up behind you and I snuck up on you and I grabbed you and locked you down now at this time I'm 5'10 and at this time, I weighed about 215 pounds, somewhere in that range. I don't remember exactly. Well, he's a little bit taller than me, but he weighed a lot more than me. He, I want to say he was somewhere between 240, maybe even 250, somewhere in just a big, big dude. And muscle, that's even bigger than just a normal person that is uh, that heavy. Well, he said, well, I don't know. Why don't you just grab me and find out? Well, I kind of looked at him. And by this time, some of the boys had gathered around. And I realized that <laughs> I may have screwed up. And I said, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Ken. Let me rephrase my question. He starts grinning. He looks at me. I said, is there a way that I can grab you, lock you down, if you get out of it, can you get out of it without actually hurting me? And he starts laughing. He goes, what fun is that? <laughs> I, I would, and he goes, no, no, I'm just, yeah, I can do that. He, I'm a professional all right so I I come up behind him I start wrapping my arms around him. let me tell you I've got long arms I've got arms that belong on someone that's about 6'4 and I've always said that I've got long orangutan arms because that's kind of <laughs> When I look at myself, that's what I feel like I look like with the length of my arms. And so, and I don't care. Someone could look at me and say, yeah, you're right, you do, have, you do have some long arms. So, I go up behind him and I grab him and I cinch it in. Then he goes, are you ready? I'm like, oh, I'm doomed. <laughs> I am doomed. I said, yeah, I got you. Are you sure? Yeah, whenever you're, whoa! And next thing I know, I'm flying through the air. We were in the middle of the ring. These rings were 18 by 18. I, I believe, I can't remember if they were 20 by 20 or 18 by 18 offhand. But anyways, I go flying through the air and I, I realize in midair I've got to take a bump so I, I roll tuck my shoulder take a bump and I tumble into the ropes because of all of the force and power and I was like holy smokes 
and the boys are cracked up laughing and uh, I said wait 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 there's got to be a different way you have to remember I was in my mid-twenties at the time so I was young and dumb full of testosterone I said let me try it a different way <laughs> so I stand in front of him this time and I grab both of his wrists and again I have another moment where I realize this dude's wrists are so thick what am I doing what's wrong with you just stop so I grab him and I push down and I'm kind of pushing his arms down I said what if I grab you like this shamrock what are you gonna do he said you just tell me when you're ready <laughs> and he's just staring at me with zero emotion in his eyes and I said before you do this remember that we're friends and we're buddies <laughs> and he starts laughing again and midway through his laugh I go flying through the air again I have no clue what he did to me or how he threw me I just know I'm flying through the air BAM and I land on my back <laughs> the boys are laughing <laughs> and I get back and I say <laughs> wait there's gotta be another way <laughs> Well, my tag partner, Chris Vaughn, at this time, he goes, we're both going to grab you. You can't throw both of us. And I'm like, yeah, you can't throw both of us. Another stupid decision on my part. Well, I don't even know how we grabbed him, but we locked down. I sunk my hips down and I bent my knees and... Vaughn had him and he goes, are you guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> Vaughn says, bring it on, baby. And next thing you know, we smash into each other. He drops down and I kind of go fly in one direction and he kind of ties Chris up in a knot. <laughs> And I look at Chris, and Chris is sitting there, and he, he didn't really apply any pressure or anything, but he kind of, you know, just let us know that <laughs> he could if he wanted to in about a half a second. Well, I looked at Vaughn, and I said, I stand corrected. <laughs> Again, all the boys are dying laughing. I said, I've had enough. I'm tapping out. So that, that was one of my that was one of my fun experiences with Ken Shamrock. Again, just a really, really good dude. And he was one of those guys that I mean he, he was on a different level. But one of those guys if you walked up to him as a younger guy trying to make it in the business and you, you say shamrock hey if you have a chance can you watch my match can you just tell me if there's anything that uh if you were me you would correct yeah absolutely remind me when you before you go out i was like all right that's cool and the time that i time or two that i did that and I came back and he said, hey, whenever you're ready to discuss, let me know. So I just would tell him, hey, whenever you're ready, he said, okay, I will. And then he kind of told me some things that were very beneficial to me. There were so many guys in that world that were on a much higher level than me and would take the time out to watch someone like me wrestle and then just say, look, why don't you try doing this this way or you do this and one of the biggest things is someone once told me and I'll tell you who later at a, at a later date when I tell you guys another road story but someone once told me look if you're standing in the middle of this ring in front of thousands of people and you're in the middle and you're the center of attention 
You have to do something to separate yourself and make those people out there who paid, who purchased the ticket to watch you understand that you belong in the ring. That you're not, that you don't belong in the seat, in a purchase seat out there with the fans. And that wasn't meant as anything negative. That was meant as, by the person that told me, you've got to be an entertainer. These people paid to watch you and for you to entertain them. So you need to be respectful of that and entertain them and that and like I said I thought that was such a cool thing you know I tried to I probably asked so many questions it, it probably got on the nerves of some guys but I would say 99% of the guys were very receptive but they also probably saw the passion that I had too and, and knew that I had a solid work ethic anyways I appreciate you guys watching this video hit that like button please don't forget to subscribe if you are not already go ahead go ahead go ahead I'll see you guys on the next episode thanks for watching everyone